What's happening everyone? Do you guys recall the number one issue with the bikes behind me at the throwback two-stroke garage build shootout? Well, it was the suspension. So how do we go about solving this problem? I've recruited the help of Racetech suspension specialists, the motor experts down in Spanish Fork, Utah to help us solve that. So let's get the suspension off of these bikes and get down to the shop. All right, guys, so we made it down to the Moto Experts in Spanish Fork, Utah Race Tech Service Center. I'm standing next to Kevin, the owner, and Cameron, and we're going to be talking all things suspension with you guys today. And they are going to completely outfit the bikes for the throwback two stroke garage build shootout with Race Tech components, gold valve springs, etc. And we're going to bring that to you guys and talk about it. So, the one thing that I wanted to bring up first was Cameron, we talked on the phone yeah. beforehand, is why it's so important to get suspension done for your bike. So I feel like a lot of us riders have a very high level understanding about what it can do. Your bike will handle better, perform better, you'll feel more comfortable, bump absorption, etc. But from a professional perspective, I wanted to go into the micro level about why it's so important to get your suspension done. Yeah, a lot of it comes down to the most important thing I think is giving the customer the best experience on their bike. Um, we want to make the bike all those things you talked about as well as make it safer. Um, we get a lot of customers that come in that say, hey, I'm just a beginner or a novice or an intermediate and I don't think custom suspension for me because that's for the pros. In all reality, it's kind of opposite. Um, for me, you know, your beginner or novice, if anything else, custom suspension makes the bike safer for them to ride. I feel like your, some of your pros, they, they can adapt better to different, like you just threw them on a stock bike, they could maybe adapt better than a beginner. But these suspension engineers for WP and Showa and KYB, and they'll just kind of, they, they have a kind of a hard job. You know, they'll throw kind of a random, not a random, but they'll throw a setting in there for the masses. And then it's our job to tune it in, to make it more plush, more predictable, better hold up, and give the, make the rider not as tired when he's riding the bike. Um, and then overall make it safer. I mean, that, that's the biggest thing for me is watching a rider on a stock setting and then watching them do that same thing on a setup that we've done and have the bike not swapping. They're more comfortable. They come back with no arm pump. They're not as tired anymore. Um, so that, that's, that's one of the big reasons. Yeah. I feel like we could spend all day talking to talking about this. Yeah. I know Kevin and I, <laughs> we're going to dive yeah. into uh, the technical side a little bit later in this video with Kevin, but he also dives into, you know, some of those micro details as well. And it's really fascinating, you know, the, behind the why of why it's so important to get suspension done. So what I wanted to touch upon next is with such a competitive dirt bike suspension market out there, you know, what do you guys do to different, differentiate yourself? And what is the advantage of, you know, riders and customers bringing their suspension to you guys to be done and completely serviced, whether it's full A kit stuff or just a quick oil change and basic service? It's, uh, it's been a fun journey here. Um... I mean, we, we became a race tech center probably four years ago. And from there, that's been my dedication, my passion. Um, I spend 100% of the time up here uh, just doing suspension and working with customers and uh, making sure everything is dialed in perfectly for each and every customer, whether that's a full setup and a revalve or if it's just your basic service. Um, there's uh, countless items that we try to address with every suspension set that comes in the door. Um, we get into it later talking about friction, uh, correct spring rates, oil levels, replacing your cartridge seals, um, uh, as well as educating the customer on if they didn't bring the bike in, if they brought the suspension in off the bike, educating them on how to install those forks uh, in shock without uh, you know, binding up the front wheel, without binding the axle not over torquing your clamps, et cetera. Um, those are some things that make a massive difference um, on bikes that come in off the showroom floor. Sometimes the lugs are pulled inwards a little bit uh, and it, it goes from feeling like you have some two by fours in front of you to <laughs> actually having suspension. Um, so that's how we've kind of been able to grow like we have over time. It's not from, you know, uh, promoting you know all the coatings and uh, making sure that everyone gets the most expensive it's just working with the needs of every individual customer educating them and making sure that they're getting the best bang for their buck 
you know, the reason why I chose to work with you guys is because actually we talked about it earlier. I don't know if you remember, but a couple years ago, my wife and I came in to look at the Dean Wilson yeah. used Fact bike. Tradition. And that yeah. was that was the first time that, you know, I had been introduced to you guys, been wanting to get down here for a long time. And ever since we stepped in the door, like that minute we stepped in the door, like you made us feel like family. Like it felt really personable. You know, like you got to know us and just going through this entire process, wanting to get my suspension done now, um, you guys really take the time to listen to what I need and you know, hearing you talk to the customers out in the, sh in the shop, you guys really take the time to do that. Um, I didn't know how to set the suspension up for the different test riders that we're gonna be having here for part two of the throwback two-stroke garage build shootout. Um, you guys listened and are making that happen. and. Can't thank you guys enough, as well as Racetech for wanting to be a part of it. All right, so we are up in the suspension department at Moto Experts. We got Kevin here, gonna be working on the RM250 fork and shock for us, kind of diving into a little behind the scenes for you guys. I wanted to ask Kevin, you know, we have a lot of your duo, your selfers out there, but you know, what is the advantages of taking it to a professional suspension shop and having them dive into it and what they're gonna look for and see compared to what maybe your do-it-yourselfer isn't necessarily going to catch. Like, it's one thing to do like your own DIY stuff in your house with, you know, renovations and drywall and, and whatnot, but even then, sometimes it pays to call the professional. Um, your suspension is a very complex system. Um, it's not just as simple as disassembling, draining, replacing seals, and putting it back together. Um, there's a lot that goes into properly setting up suspension, even in stock form, even without revalve and a full setup. Um, there's a lot of things that we pay attention to, to reduce friction, um, to thoroughly clean, and uh, refinish surfaces that are, you know, uh, refinishing you know, the fork tubes, reducing friction, replacing bushings. Um, and then uh, the cartridges are, you know, where the complex um, systems are. And we want to show, demonstrate how we disassemble that and properly clean, inspect, and uh, reassemble. Um, but we see a lot of suspension come in. Um, it really does pay to to get things done the right way the first time. Um, some of these, you know, older sets of suspension, you can't easily find parts for anymore. So if you're disassembling and you scratch or gouge um, like the damping rod internally, uh, that can be a very expensive mistake. So as you can see, I, I've got a lot of the correct tools. This is a big investment. Um, so unless you want to, you know, spend hundreds, thousands of dollars on having the correct tools, you run the risk of damaging your components. So we use, you know, the Racetech aluminum soft jaws. These prevent, uh, if you're using steel jaws or, you know, blocks of wood even or something else, you run the risk of, you know, gouging up the, the coating on the fork. Um, so that's just one of the, the things that we we use here. So, yeah, your oil still looks pretty fresh and clean. I know you just serviced it, so. I think it's only got about maybe an hour and a half of riding. Okay. So that's good to know that oil somewhat lasts an hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the normal oil service intervals? Uh, 20 to 30 hours is pretty common, or that's what we recommend. Um, looks like your rebound adjuster is all the way out. You don't want to use impact tools on your forks. Um, you can cause some damage and strip threads. So even though it takes longer, this is better than damaging components. Another Racetech tool, this is a, 
plastic so it's not going to you know as this slides around your damping rod it's not going to you know gouge it or scratch it or damage it so it's not a good idea to use a 14 millimeter wrench do not do that <laughs> yeah the lesson learned um, I think the damping rods on these forks are Kashima coated and it's not a, it's a Suzuki part, you know, so over 10 years old, it's not going to be easy to find a replacement if you ruin it. So if you want to come over to this side. So I have to say I am a culprit of using the 14 millimeter wrench to kind of hold this up because I would have been too cheap to buy this tool. But as you can see, they make not, a... not the best. Uh, not the best technique yeah they they do make aluminum ones i just prefer the plastic uh, and again this is sold by race tech has a larger end for your 14 millimeter damping rods that you get on your newer showa 49s so So the reason I drain the oil at the top before doing removing the, uh, the base bolt, if you do that and you force it out, it's going to blow oil all over your bench and your floor. So This little side drain that you've got set up here. Yeah, it reduces a lot of mess. So again, you just want to drain out as much as you can. Looks like you, did you put new bushings in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the bushings and seals that I put in were all from Pro-X. Gotcha. Pro-X seals aren't bad. Um, I, we pretty much exclusively run the SKF seals. SKF is what comes factory on your Austrian bikes. So KTM, Husky, Gas Gas. Um, and it's just a higher quality seal. I rarely have, you know, um, new KTMs leaking from the factory um, that does occasionally happen with some of the showas and kybs and then before disassembling the cartridge i just want to make sure that the cartridge seal and the resi piston seal um, that they're holding and that they're um, you know holding pressure so the way we test that kind of want to cover the top hole with your thumb so it doesn't blow out but you just compress it You want to make sure it re-extends so everything looks good there these show 47s have a nice flat spot here that you can clamp to keep the cartridge from rolling in your vise Now the Honda and the Suzuki are both the 47 Showa. Yeah. But when I noticed them when I was working on them, the cartridges are just a little bit different. Between yeah. Them. You'll have different lengths. Um, some Showa 47s, the Hondas, they went to a chrome damping rod on some of the X's. Uh, I'm not sure the specific models and years, but this is a Kashima coated damping rod. Um, again, you want to be very delicate with it. A lot of times you'll see gouging and scratches. You have a little bit right there, but not, not bad. Cool to know that that's Kashima as well. Yeah, so the, um, the top portion of the cartridge, this is also Kashima coated from the factory. So that's not normal so you don't want that to be spinning that means that this nuts fortunately the 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 oem holder it has peening 
on the top. It's hard to see on these showas, but it keeps that nut from backing all the way off. So even though this isn't favorable, that's much better than the nut coming off completely and grenading the inside of your, your fork. So um, something to pay attention to if you are revalving and you're removing that peening, you want to use a lock nut um, in Loctite, torque it to spec. Um, some guys will peen, you know, with a punch to keep that from backing off. I've never had a problem with that. Um, we just use lock nuts, Loctite, torque it, and they don't come off. So why would that be moving? Uh, just over time, that, that nut came loose. Oh, okay. um, so. so. This is a more common issue that I see on the, the mid valve holder, um, especially if someone's been using an impact to disassemble or reassemble, um, you know, that, that uh, base bolt, because it spins the whole damping rod inside of the cartridge and sometimes it grabs and, you know, the nut will back off. Cool. So. So this one's actually okay. It's not spinning. So this is something that I actually didn't do when I took mine apart. I just kind of kept this whole cartridge assembly yeah. together. Yeah, and a lot of guys don't remove this, but this is very common, especially on these showas, for that nut to come loose. And you know, th this bike's a 2006, so you know, it's over 15 years old. Um, and in many cases, these have never been removed. Um, so the valving, it, it can get pretty gunked up. Um, if the bike's been ridden hard, more than likely you've got some distorted shims, which affects your damping characteristics. Uh, it makes everything feel a little bit softer. So a lot of times we'll just do a stock service, replace some of these worn shims, put it back together, and the customer thinks that we, you know, stiffen things up which technically we did, but we just put it back to factory mm. specs. Um, so. And working on it myself, that's actually something that I wouldn't feel comfortable doing. R right, and. Uh, and wouldn't know. Yeah, so in your case, you're probably better off not disassembling and running the risk of damaging coatings or components or, uh, but uh, this is just one of those small things that we do pay attention to on uh, on these sets of suspension as they come in. Um, so from here, we you know this is completely disassembled. Um, a lot of times we'll have to replace the cartridge seals, which is not a very simple task on these showas. You have to drill in and remove that peening. Um, hit this with uh, a, you know some heat to deactivate the Loctite. And then this whole ba uh, bottom assembly comes out and you have to replace that seal. So if you ever rebuild your own cartridge, reassemble, and then you compress it and you have oil leaking down your damping rod, that's a sign that you've torn your, your seal. And that's the other thing. Sometimes the seal's fine when you come apart, but if you force the damping rod back into the cartridge, you can easily tear that. So. Um, when we reassemble, I do make sure that there's no burrs or edges. I fill all the threads and the grooves with the heavy grease um, just to help it slide through that seal gently without tearing or ruining it, anything. Um, it's crazy how much more in depth and the difference in knowledge that I have compared to, to you, the expert has. Like so many things that I just have, I don't know and I'm just not familiar with that that's what you're getting when you bring your suspension to a professional. 
Yeah, and that's one of the things, the longer I've done suspension, the more inclined I've been to call professionals for house things, you know, to do my plumbing, to do my electrical, to do things at my house, because I understand what it's like to think that you know and that you're comfortable performing a job um, until you have a professional look at it and you realize all these steps and important things that you were missing um, or, you know, messing up. So. Anyways, from here, all of this stuff will get cleaned up. Um, we'll go ahead and disassemble the other leg. And make sure that's all good to go. All right, guys, so what I want to talk about next is what we're actually doing to the suspension on the bikes for the throwback two-stroke garage build shootout. So what we're doing to the bikes is full suspension rebuilds with gold valves, springs. Kevin's going to go through, that, through them, do the whole nine yards, make sure everything is operating correctly. But what I wanted to talk to Kevin about is actually the gold valves and the springs from Racetech. So why they are so good, what are the advantages of them, and the differences that they're actually going to make compared to stock springs and stock valves in the bike. So we're going to be going through all four sets of your uh, suspension off the CR250, YZ250, KX250, and the uh, RM250. Um, we are reusing the factory suspension, the stock suspension. Um, so we will be disassembling, um, servicing, replacing seals, uh, refinishing the tubes, um, as well as installing gold valves and race tech springs. Um, so the advantage with the race tech springs is they are a consistent spring and uh, they do not sack out over time as they say. Uh, which means if we put a 0.49 spring rate in a set of forks, uh, when we, if we remove those springs a few years down the road, they're still going to um, measure out the same. Um, and then the other aspect of that is a lot of the factory springs are what you call an open-ended coil. Um, so I'll show you on the shock spring. This is an example of an open-ended coil. So as this shock spring is compressing, this is going to be a lighter rate until the ends of this coil touch. And then you get into a straight rate. Um, all race tech springs are a closed end coil spring, which means that touches. Um, and it's the same rate all the way through the stroke. It's, there's no progression, um, which is a good thing. As far as the gold valves go, uh, one of the biggest items that we try to address on every set of suspension is reducing friction. Friction is not a tuning variable. Uh, we want to reduce that so that all of the tuning is coming from the damping, uh, the, the valving that we're putting in, as well as the spring rates. So if you have, you know, sticky seals, uh, that's going to add friction. If you have uh, worn bushings or, uh, um, you know, worn tubes with, you know, that are kind of glazed over, uh, that's going to add friction because that's increased surface area. Um, as far as the gold valves go, the big advantage here, um, this is a lower friction piston. So this piston um, is going to produce less friction um, within the shock body compared to many of your factory pistons. These are very sticky as they're sliding up and down in that shock body. Um, and then the other part of that is you can see how small these compression ports are in the factory piston compared to the compression ports in the gold valve. And this is the compression side. This is the rebound side. Um, and it's the same way you know, on the WP piston, more restrictive, um, more friction. Um, so what we're able to achieve with these gold valves is we have greater tunability with these larger ports. And uh, this is an example. This is a, uh, a mid valve that comes out of the air forks. It's plastic um, with a plastic band, very cheap. Um, and this is also not tunable. Uh, the the mid valve holder and the WP forks, um, you cannot adjust float, you cannot adjust that mid valve. Um, it's a check plate system. 
So with the gold valve system, we're able to adjust that. Um, you know, tune the float, tune your uh, the the overall feel. Um, so there's a lot of advantages. Um, I don't want to get into the weeds too much with all that, um, but that's kind of the essence of what we're trying to accomplish here is setting up all four sets of the suspension, um, reducing the friction and getting the settings, um, the correct settings installed for um, all the different test riders that you will be um, having on those bikes. All right, so we're just removing the shock spring. Uh, from this RM shock. I really like this uh, spring compressor. Um, simple and easy. So you just kind of, just gently, it, you don't need to clamp down on it hard, just enough to hold it in place. Sometimes you get a lot of grit and stuff in here that keeps you from sliding that collar down, the perch, but one isn't that bad. So before disassembling, we're gonna back off all of our clickers. And that's all the way out too. The high speed's out. And then It actually doesn't, I don't hear any air, so I think he did a somewhat decent job. A lot of times we have guys bring in their shocks that they've rebuilt like you did and um, we'll charge the nitrogen, but I'll, you know, compress it before charging the nitrogen and you'll hear all the air moving through the high speed through the valving and it's like, I can charge it, but, uh, it's not, you'll probably blow a seal out with all the air that you have in there. Um, the air pressurizes and um, you tend to blow seals. Um, and the damping characteristics drastically change if you have air in the oil. So, just removing the straighter valve. Another race tech tool. This is our seal head tool. Just kind of pushes that down so that we can remove the retaining ring. You want to be careful because this is, um, you don't want to scratch up your anodizing. A lot of times I see that gets gouged up. Um, and then before we pull that out, I'm just gonna take it to the cleaner to get all the grit and stuff out so we're not scratching anything. You wanna protect your coatings. Soft mallet. You want to come apart as slowly as you can. Keep oil from going everywhere. Like that. This is the part that I struggled with. Yeah. <laughs> Took them apart. It's always harder when the camera's rolling, but. <laughs> this is the real deal. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, that doesn't look terrible. Um, I've seen much worse. So can you explain the peening on the end of this nut here? So normally you have a factory peening like we saw on the forks to prevent that nut from backing off and losing your piston and all the valving inside of the shock. So uh, the peening uh, just retains that nut, keeps everything kind of locked in there. 
Um, but to service it, you do have to remove the peening because you have to remove the nut. If you just put a 17 wrench on there and you start going ham, you'll likely damage the shaft and have to replace the shaft. Um, so this was one that I did when I first rebuilt the shock and it was actually something that I was really nervous about messing up the bottom of the shaft and the threads but Kevin's about to demonstrate the tool that he uses to make sure it happens smoothly and correctly and looks aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. So we just on slow speed you don't need to go fast. And that's what we're going for. That looks nice. <laughs> See, you had some red Loctite on there, so that's good. Did something right. And we never reuse your nut, you throw that away. That might have been a mistake that I made. Actually, it's all right. We're using that nut. A lot of people do. It's okay. I it's probably okay, but I I always put new nuts on there. We can remove your seal head, dust cap, and your bottom out bumper and cup. And what uh, this is just a stainless steel welding rod. Um, I just use that. We put the valving on there so that I can keep it in order and and then we'll clean that up. So you can kind of see the wear over time on these shims. Um, so just like your engine components, you have internal components in your suspension that does wear out and uh, you know the suspension will start feeling softer or the, the damping properties will be different over time. Um, the other thing is there's, you have your piston band and under this piston band is a groove in the piston and an O-ring and both of these components, the piston band and the O-ring, uh, these are worn. Um, so we would either put a gold valve in with, you know, obviously they come with fresh piston bands or uh, replace this with a, a new OEM band, an O-ring. Um, otherwise, you just have excessive bleed around the outside of the piston. You want the oil to be forced through the ports of the piston and have as little as possible um, going around the outside. You can see a lot of that fine scoring and just scratches on there. We um, won't do a micro finish on that to just polish it, clean it up. Um, you can see, you, you would think that the smoother, um, the better. Um, but what we like to do is reduce surface area, which reduces friction. Uh, so the micro finish is actually kind of a, like a cross hatch that we put on here. Uh, nothing to be worried about. It doesn't cause any loss of oil. Um, but it reduces friction on the dust seal, the bushing, the, the oil seal. Um, and uh, it makes a bigger difference on fork tubes just because of the surface area, but uh, we, we do like to do that also on the shock shaft. All right, and then we're using um, just some Nipex soft jaw pliers. So it's a smooth jaw, it's not gonna gouge anything. Um, so these are a great go-to. I have three different sizes. Um, I do have a tool for, you know, some of the KYB. It's just, I haven't found a tool for, you know, these Showa, the older adjusters. So the Showa is a one piece or it's, a, it's an assembly. It comes out in one piece, KYB. You'll, and you know, WP, it comes out in a few different pieces. So you just have to keep track of that as it comes out. Um, so this gets all cleaned up and, uh, you know, before it goes back in. Anything to look for in those or? Um, so this still has the factory peening in there. I don't 
typically use the high speed adjuster as a tuning variable. If the peening has been removed by a previous tuner, um, I will usually disassemble that and make sure it's all back to factory settings um, just so it doesn't uh, mess with the settings that we're putting on the shock. want to get too aggressive with these um, it is aluminum so if you start you know twisting on that and pulling it back and forth you can easily rip that stem off um, again be gentle you don't want to scratch your coatings working from a weird angle let me know if I need to move no you're good We do, typically, we, we want to replace these bladders. This looks pretty new. Did so that you... actually is an OEM one that okay. I bought. Okay. We built it. Yeah, I, I prefer the OEM bladders over some of the aftermarket kits that you can get. Um, so there we go, shock body is completely disassembled. Um, So we'll kind of look in there, some light wear, but uh, overall pretty good. Um, a good indicator of internal coatings uh, wearing through when you disassemble the shock and you drain the oil out, if it's black, that the, the oil turns black is a sign of oxidation. Um, if the oil has been exposed to raw aluminum inside of the shock, it'll oxidize it, turn it black, um, and it's not good for your components, not good for the oil. Uh, and that's when we would recommend uh, either replacing the shock body, or in this case, you know, with the age of this, we would send it out to have it re-hard anodized or Kashima coated, depending on what the customer wants to do. So this is an example of one that we've sent out and had re-Kashima coated. It's best to do it during your winter season or the hot months when you're not riding because it does take some time. Um, but this coating, it should never wear through unless you've neglected service or if you've had a catastrophic failure. But the Kashima coating, it's uh, infused with, uh, it's like a molybdenum lubrication. So. This is a much slicker, uh, lower friction coefficient than your hard anodizing. Um, makes a big difference on the shock body, just with the surface area of your piston band. I don't have the pricing off the top of my head, but it, it, it's you know about four or five hundred bucks to send these off. Just for the shock body? Mm -hmm. Wow, so that's, uh, that's the real deal. Yeah, that's the real deal. This is what the, the you best know, of the best. The the teams are running. You know your mountain bike suspension components, uh, Kashima coating. Um, so as far as coatings go, it doesn't get any better than this stuff. All right, so the next thing I wanted to bring up is suspension coatings. It actually provides a performance advantage over just looking cool. So we've got Kevin here to talk about the advantages of coating. And if you guys are interested in getting coating yourself, what is actually worth it and what isn't. So we'll dive into that right now. All right, well, I do want to be clear the number one advantage of these coatings is the bling factor. Um, this looks uh, significantly cooler than you know running the you know silver uppers and lowers on on the stock bike. Um, there are advantages and disadvantages. Um, we really like the coloring. Um, you can get some of the these more vibrant colors. Uh, they work really well uh, and they look amazing. The only downside here is the color is not going to be as durable as a pure black or a super DLC uh, finish. Um, you see, you know, the fancy co uh, colorings, the blues, the turquoises on a lot of the factory bikes, uh, which is great, but you also have to take into consideration that. Uh, Many of the teams are, are uh, replacing these tubes after you know a race or a weekend or every couple weekends because 
through racing you do get blemishes you get dings um, and the color is not quite as durable as the black most of the time we are recommending doing the black uh, just for durability purposes um, if the color wears through it's purely aesthetic uh, usually the color will wear through and it'll show black underneath which doesn't look great to have black splotches under the color so the main advantage performance advantage to this is the lower friction coefficient um, like we were talking about before, uh, the biggest, one of the biggest things we try to address on suspension is reducing friction. If you reduce friction, you reduce heat, you kind of prolong the life of the internals. Uh, same theory behind uh, changing the oil and um, there are DLC coated components internally in uh, many of the engines um, for that reason. If you're more of an extreme off-road, you know, hard enduro type racer, I would not necessarily recommend this because they cost a lot of money and it makes it that much more uh, frustrating when you have a bad get off in the rocks and you dent a tube or ding a tube or scratch it and you feel like it's, it's ruined. So this is a Kashima coated upper tube. We send these out to Japan. Uh, you can see the factory tube. It's got these machining lines. They do a full polish on the outside. This isn't necessary. This isn't a performance advantage on the outside, but it looks amazing. So th there is a big reason why all the, you know, a lot of the mountain bike manufacturers, uh, suspension companies, and even off-road trophy trucks have started getting more into Kashima coating. Um, again, for just reducing temperature, reducing friction, and uh, it looks awesome. Most riders aren't going to notice or feel a, a, a significant difference in going from a OEM coating to the factory coatings. Uh, some of your more experienced vet riders can notice that, um, and uh, we notice it with service intervals. Uh, you, you can get a little bit longer life um, out of the fluid before it starts to break down but you should still get the fork serviced every 20 to 30 hours or so. But yeah, that kind of sums up what, what we uh, do with the coatings. Um, and we, we want to make sure that we set the expectations for the customers. It's great if you want to do the color, just know that uh, this can last many years if, uh, if, you don't, if you're not a reckless rider and you're not crashing or riding in the mud or in the sand too much. Uh, but if you get if you get grit trapped in between your dust and oil seals, that can, you know, uh, cause some discoloration and and whatnot. But uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's coatings. So here we have um, two uh, two fork legs off the same bike, a 2006 RM 250. This is the factory fork. Uh, this is after we've done the coatings. Um, so we have the black DLC lower and the Kashima upper. Um, internally, the cartridges are the same cartridges. Um, however, we have revalved, um, you know, we have gold valves, um, you know, with settings specific to the rider. Uh, this is all just a factory fork. So we've also done the coating on the lower lug just to kind of complete the package there. SKF seals versus the OEM seals. This fork looks way better on your bike than this fork. Um, but if you scratch this fork, you're not gonna be as upset as scratching this fork. Um, so just things that you have to take into consideration. All right, guys, so that is gonna be a wrap here with my tour of the Moto Expert shop. I'm gonna finally let Kevin do all his magic and work the suspension like he knows how to do. We went through everything, the, the coatings, the gold valves, the springs. I feel like we touched upon a lot of things behind the scenes that is great info for you guys. It was great info for me to hear. I knew that, I know that my jaw hit the floor so many times just talking and learning about these things. I feel like we could spend hours here. It already has been hours, but we could spend days here learning about all this stuff. So I just wanna say thank you, Cameron, Kevin, to you guys. Thank you to Race Tech for being a part of this project. Once we get the bikes, once we get the suspension back on the bikes, we are we're planning to do uh, a track shoot where we're going to, you know, once you get the suspension back from being worked on, 
how do you actually set it up when you're at the track you know sometimes it's not as easy as just plug and play and and, and off you go it takes a while to understand how the suspension now works after being reworked and all those little tweaks to make it that much better when you're out there riding so kind of toss it over to you guys any last closing remarks yeah i just want to make sure that that people in general understand that uh, we're here to support you and that's probably one of the things that sets us apart we don't ever want a customer to feel dumb calling in with a question um, or they maybe don't know how to do something don't ever feel bad calling in and asking a question you can also shoot us a text you can shoot us an email um, we try and be really good at responding to those things so whether you have a question about servicing pricing quoting a clicker adjustment there, we have a big support system here um, I want to make sure that that's available to everybody, whether you you know have our stuff or not. It's 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 a good it's a good support system to have. That's what makes me comfortable too. So if I have a question, I just shoot camera a text real quick, and I feel like within 10 minutes, I'm already getting a response to my to my question. So it makes me feel comfortable when I don't always like getting on the phone. So I definitely <laughs> yeah. like that about you guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For for us, a big thing. It's not just about sending suspension out the door. Um, it's about developing that relationship uh, with the customer. We we have full expectation that when the suspension goes out the door that uh, there will be communication and uh, that we want to work with the customer until they feel 100% on that bike. So if you're bringing in your bike um, or the suspension on the bike before you leave, we're setting your sag for you so that that's not a factor when you go to the track. and. Um, just these little things that can end up making a huge impact. Our, our priority is to ensure that the customer's happy and 100% satisfied for the long run. So that's why we're here. And you guys working with Racetech, they have some clout in the industry, I would say. Yeah, so. there's definitely a name behind it. All the, I mean, I can't even tell you how much money and time's gone into the R&D behind the Racetech products. Um, and it's just incredible to have their backing as well. Um, it, it really helps. Cool. So awesome. We'll wrap this thing up. Thank you guys again. Um, guys, stay tuned for part two of the Throwback Two Stroke Garage Build Shootout. We're going to be having the same riders ride these bikes to be able to compare the Moto Experts suspension, full service suspension, gold valve springs, etc. compared to the stock stuff. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a minute of that stuff. So as always, guys, ride hard, be safe. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.